Welcome to the dungeon. My name is Civi Eleven. At least it is now. And the G-Men have picked out something just great today. Just fantastic. Unreal 2 The Awakening, developed by Legend Entertainment, produced by Epic Games, formerly Epic Mega Games. I assume they changed the name because Epic Mega Games is too fucking extreme. Look, your games can be Epic or Mega. Pick one, because... Okay, never mind. Unreal 2 is the sequel to Unreal 1, which is a pretty cool old shooter from 1998. It didn't really break new ground gameplay-wise, but it was beautiful, atmospheric, had good multiplayer. I mean, the multiplayer was so good that they made Unreal Tournament the exclusively multiplayer game, and not Unreal Tournament 2003, Unreal Tournament 2004, Unreal Tournament 3, and whatever the fuck the new one is called. But sandwiched between Unreal Tournament 2003 and 2004 is this piece of shit. Now, I know what you're saying. Epic Games doesn't make bad games. Okay, maybe this game is technically impressive, for the time, but I have a feeling it's gonna leave me bitter and disappointed like Star Wars, and women, and men. You play as John Dalton, and he used to be a space marine, but now he just flies around space shooting things, which is totally different, but- Commander Hawkins, sir. Good to see you, Dalton. I'll get right to the point. Your request for reinstatement in the Marines has been denied. Again. Damn. I'm getting mighty tired of babysitting the ass end of nowhere. The Colonial Authority isn't so bad, John. We don't see as much action as the Marines, but our tradition of service is just as strong. Save it for the recruits, sir. I know the score. Jesus, dude. That's another branch of the service. They do plenty of space soldiering. Just because it's not space marining doesn't mean it isn't valuable. What an asshole. This motherfucker would throw shade on the Space Red Cross. After this exposition, you go back to your ship and... Oh my. Oh. Hello. This is Ida. Ida is a mature and well-conceived depiction of a female in a video game. Also, her tits are fucking enormous. And really out there. You know how fucking cold it is in space, girl? I assume she's some kind of soldier or xenolinguistics expert. So you can start by inspecting the ship. And this guy Isaac, he leads you over to inspect Ida's room. But nothing really happens in there. What a crime. So you get to visit this boring fucking ship with these fucking people between every mission, and you can just go get your briefing from Miss Funbags over here. The first mission has you, a single space marine, I mean, Terran Colonial Authority, and you have to help these guys because they're being attacked by an unknown alien force. So this eight-year-old game takes almost 40 seconds to load the first level. Whoa, Jesus. It's a bloodbath. This guy with his head on a spike seems okay with it, though. Thank God! Help me! Might be a little late for that, dude. And also, just fantastic voice acting from someone being disemboweled. Top notch, 10 out of 10. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Oh, you sneaky alien bastards. You put him down. Get this one! Wait! I'm broadcasting! Sir, up here! The camera! I'm watching you on the security network. Boy, am I glad to see you. TCA, wow! I wasn't sure anyone got my distress call. I'm Danny Miller, level one technician. I hope you're here to rescue me, because there's no way I'm getting out on my own. Probably not, but don't worry. This guy, he doesn't look too broken up about it. I'm barricaded in a security office over in the generator building. You'll have to go through the collection plant to get here, though. How's your suit pressure? Fine. You ever heard the expression, blood is thicker than water? Well, it's true. Well, someone wrote this. Get away from the camera, you space monkey freaks! Leave it alone! Yeah, these enemies are very monkey-like, and sound like monkeys. They're really annoying, but this is the only mission they appear in. So to start, you get a useless energy pistol. And you get an assault rifle that is suspiciously similar to the completely unnecessary one Legend Entertainment put into the Unreal expansion, right down to the same primary and secondary fire modes. Also a grenade launcher made by fucking Hydra? I'm starting to think the Terran Colonial Authority might not be the good guys. You might think that the player should move a little faster than that, maybe I could use the sprint or something. But you're a fucking idiot if you think that, because this is sprinting. This is as fast as you can move in this game. You might think, but Civvy, everything else in the game moves faster. I know, right? But you're a space marine in a big ugly fucking suit of brown power armor, so forget it.
Hold on, just wait a second. There's a bunch of alien monkeys obviously spawning behind this crate, and also out of nowhere. It's like Serious Sam over here, except this is probably the most you fight in a time in the entire game. They go down easy until... Oh, god damn it. Initializing. Stand by. I am standing by. I have been standing by for 30 fucking seconds. Wait. What's that I hear? Is it the dulcet tones of a predator-inspired alien? A formidable opponent from this franchise's past? Look at that. I'd recognize those wrist blades anywhere. Now we're talking. Da. Ah. Hey, Ida. Does your guidebook hmm? list this as a vacation spot for Scar? He's probably checking up huh? on a cesarean grunt. <laughs> I don't like this job. Jesus, this scar can take a beating. Looks like they can deflect bullets now? The fuck is that shit? Are they Jedi? Look at these guys, they're so beefy, they look like Batfleck now. It's okay, I guess, they're still a force to be reckoned with. And now, 40 seconds of loading. What the fuck is happening? Oh Jesus, I can't outrun shit in this game, he's all over me and there's lasers everywhere! Because of how slow you move, the scar are on your ass at all times. This is gonna be a problem. That, and having to walk really long distances without anything happening. I think that might be a problem, too. No! No! Leave me alone! Stay away! Ah! Obstruction detected. So that guy dies, but drops an interesting looking artifact down this silo. And you have to get to it, and fight more Scar. Your job's done. Fighting Scar isn't in the mission profile. Yeah, why would I want to fight Scar in an Unreal game? Are you kidding? So you get this artifact, fight an even beefier Scar, and leave. I called HQ and they went ape. A speed ship of Marines is on the way to collect it. Get to the surface and hunker down till they get there. Nice work, Marshal. You should have been a Marine. Don't get me started. No, please don't. Damn. I'm getting mighty tired of babysitting the ass end of nowhere. That the artifact? Doesn't look like much. Must be important to someone, though. Okay. We'll take it from here. Take care flying out. The area is still plenty hot. Will do. Semper Fi. Semper Fi, motherfucker. Then you get to the second mission, which is behind two more loading screens where you go back down to the planet because the Scar have shot down your marine friends who have the artifact. They really want it. Time to dick around in this foggy terrain demo for a while. You follow these beacons for a couple of minutes, then find the marines, then fight off some Scar. Then you get a shotgun, but curiously not a flat cannon. I wanted a flat cannon. This is an unreal game, and I don't think that's an unreasonable quest. So after you kill everything, Ida comes and picks everybody up. You have to hold down a position for a while and wait, and it's pretty boring. Hey, did you guys like the Scar? Weren't they fun? Ah, eh, fuck them. This is Unreal 2. It's here to impress the shit out of you with its variety. Greetings, Marshal. It is a pleasure to serve you. This is Nabon, the Hex Corps, whatever. He doesn't talk English good, and it's just a constant source of comedy. Do you have a course plotted? Yes. A place called Hell. At least. Ida told me to go to hell, so that is my plan. Hey, boss. This is Isaac. He's a former alcoholic with a troubled past who briefs you on your weapons. Haven't lost my left and right mouse buttons, so he's completely unnecessary. Things remain motionless for weapon scan. Uh... Scanning. No. Huh? 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 Weapons detected. Relinquish all weapons. Relinquish all weapons? Seriously? Weapons. Sounds like they mean it, Ida. Anytime you're ready, Ida. I'm working on it. Ida! Got it. Security override. Disengaging defense systems. Thank you, and have a nice day. So, did you have it all along? Or do you just like making me sweat? Go to hell, Dalton. Already there, toots. Toots? Toots. I'm gonna mull over the use of that word during this 30-second loading screen. Hold on.
Jones, someone who wasn't writing Roger Rabbit, unironically wrote the word toots into a script and had someone record the line, and at no point during the production of this game did one of the producers, designers, playtesters, or curious janitors say, Toots? Are you sure, guys? You sure that isn't an outdated term that just comes off as hokey? It's time for the real enemies in this game. Giant spiders. Whole goddamn level of giant spiders. Perfect. Great. Enemy AI so good that it just runs towards you while you shoot it with a flamethrower. Are you excited yet? I'm excited. Then you shoot it a big, big spider. Anyone remember when Unreal was about surviving on an alien planet, an outsider gathering supplies to fight an intelligent and tough alien race while freeing another peaceful alien race? Remember that? Well, now it's about collecting the guffin pieces and having terrible dialogue. You're welcome. What do these things do? No one knows. We know they're virtually indestructible, and that they emit energy in a way we haven't begun to understand. How many of them are there? Seven. Buried on different planets for millions of years. Unfortunately, the Izanagi and Leandri corporations caught on and have started massive hunts on their own. How do the Scar fit in? They know we want them, so they want them too. So what comes in? As of now, you and your crew are all temporarily restored to your former ranks. Oh, okay, so now, now we're Space Marines again. Awesome. What do you think is going on? I've dealt with Drexler before. He's a weasel. Don't trust him. Yeah, he's just using you as some kind of pawn. Some soldier he can send out, kill things, and steal artifacts. Wait, who is Drexler? We never actually see this guy, but if Ida is right, he's just the worst. You have to trust someone, Ida. That's how organization works. Otherwise, everything will just fall apart. Christ, would you listen to yourself? This is the military we're talking about. This brilliant ethical conversation is very moving. But wait, we have to go kill a bunch of people, so... Asheron is the strangest planet in the sector. What's interesting is that the surface of the planet is covered by a single gigantic organism that has breathing tubes the size of subway tunnels and spores as big as starships. So why the fuck would you build a base there? The Izanagi Corporation has been methodically killing this creature as they terraform the planet. Why? Is it because they're evil? If you're confused, if you keep hearing about things that are never explained, don't worry, because Dalton knows everything about this stuff, and he'll spout exposition to Naban, because Naban knows absolutely nothing. I am very confusing. That's never gonna get old. All these corporations, mercenary forces, alien races, I am mixing them over. Yeah, okay, I would normally skip something like this. This is not game. This isn't even remotely game. I'm pressing a number to listen to someone explain the plot. The player character is in me, knows all of this stuff, so I have to explain it. I'm trying to think of a word stronger than tedious, and I think I'm going to land on fucking, fucking tedious. tedious. The Leandri Corporation is a heavy industrial and mining combine with installations on dozens of planets. The Izanagi is a broad-based conglomerate modeled on the ancient Japanese Kuritsu. The Scar are a power-hungry race who have been trying to expand into this sector of space. Normally, their highly tribal social structure prevents them from working together. But recently, we've seen unusual examples of cooperation between the clans, stop, stop. which can only spell Right there, okay, the Scar took over a planet in the last game, and I assume they had some kind of hive structure or, or hierarchy, because at the end of the Unreal 1, you, you kill their queen. Their, their queen. This unorganized race that doesn't work together took over this planet, had armored soldiers with advanced weaponry, spaceships, basically magic, and only now are they working together. So is that army of Scarge I killed in the last game one tribe? Is that why the new ones are so fucking jacked? They're only working together now, like different Scarge queens get together, and they play cards, and they're like, well, you should really see what these humans are doing with those ancient artifacts. Once you're done enslaving that planet over there with your massive organized army and- WHAT?! WHAT THE F- Legend Entertainment has a little history with the series. They made the Unreal Expansion Pack return to Napoli. It takes place right after you escape the planet in Unreal 1. You get picked up by Space Marines, and they send you back to the planet to get some important tech thing. And let me tell you, you can see the seeds of Unreal 2 planted in this. It's not terrible, but the design choices are occasionally baffling. I've been betrayed. Why does this not surprise me? I should have known what to expect from those bastards. The new weapons, besides the combat assault rifle, are a grenade launcher and a rocket launcher. Which you get in Unreal 2, but the rocket launcher in Napoli is honestly better. But here's the thing, 
Unreal already has a weapon called the 8-Ball Gun, the primary fire of which is a rocket, and the secondary fire is a grenade. So why split one weapon into two weapons? It's not really... It, it seems impractical, because you just had the one thing that did both. Here's something you might recognize. Giant spiders. This well is never gonna run dry. The thing is, with new weapons, especially the assault rifle, they don't really fit in with the combat. Unreal didn't have many hitscan weapons, and the ones it had became pretty useful and showed up fairly late in the game. But here you get the combat assault rifle, which sprays bullets faster than the minigun, and when you aim at things, you mostly just see fountains of blood. And in a game where the combat was originally designed with weapons that your opponents can dodge, the assault rifle becomes pretty cheap. You can just spray and pray it away now, it's done. But then, when they introduce a new enemy, this little grim, dark Yoshi here, it looks like you could kill it fairly easily, but no. This thing shrugs off a grenade to the face. But it wouldn't be the spiritual predecessor to Unreal 2 without Space Marines. Oh, and they get the cheap hitscan weapon you have. It's bullshit. Some of these logs mention Dalton? Is that you? Are they talking about this guy? Did Legend Entertainment just make a sequel to Return to Napoli? I mean, why? Who gives a shit? Who who the fuck cares about the story of Return to Napoli? Fine, okay, I'll shut up about it. Their warriors are all highly independent, intelligent, and very dangerous fighters. Doesn't even matter. You're not going to see another scar until nearly the end of the game. Yes, the main antagonist of the last game, the aliens, the is everyone's afraid of, will not be appearing for the majority of this game. But if you like boring, stupid human grunts, man, have I got about ten levels of liquid shit for you. Ida gives you a special magnum for this next mission. I guess it's kind of like the one from Unreal 1, except it does more damage, has a tiny clip, and a really, really limited ammo supply. And you need three shots, a third of a clip, to bag anybody. Spraying and praying with the assault rifle or the shotgun is always a better option. Now, I need to talk about the weapon selection in this game, because it is so unintuitive, I can't imagine who thought that this was a good idea. Take a look at this. What button do you think you press for your starting weapon? This here energy pistol. One? Right? Maybe two? Wrong, it's four. It's slot four. Your assault rifle? That should be four, obviously. Maybe three, you know, if you're thinking about how these things are usually done in first-person shooters. Well, no, it's slot two. Your rocket launcher? Slot three. Of course, your grenade launcher? Also slot three. Your sniper rifle? Slot four with the energy pistol. These two things belong together. The other pistol you get, slot one. The flamethrower is a six or a seven, wouldn't you think? Nope, slot one with the shotgun. Is this based on the weapon's practical combat use? Shotgun and flamethrower have a wide spread. Rocket launcher and grenade launcher are explosives. What's wrong with spreading it out a little? You have ten keys for this. Why is this such a clusterfuck? Back to Aeshron? where you go shoot some guys and you go into this dig, and it seems like the terraformed area is right on top of a living material. So, is this all like dead skin and hairs and sarlacc pits? Inside the sarlacc pit, you get another artifact piece, and they get chased by these things. I guess they're like white blood cells in this huge being. And you have to avoid getting puked on, too. It's not really what I'd call interesting. You just run out of the place, go back up the elevator, and once you're outside, nothing happens except more puke avoidance. And the mission is over. There's a lot of walking around these places with nothing to do, and then nearly a minute to load a cutscene. The Izanagi are not at all happy with your incursion on Asheron. Who? Oh? The Izanagi is a broad-based conglomerate. Care. Is there a way I can get the electrodes put back in? Can I do that instead of this? You chose this CV-11? Yeah, but, I don't know, this is a AAA studio, man. This is Epic Games. I didn't know it would get this bad. They are massing their forces on Severnaya. The fleet on Severnaya draws its power from energy generated by the Minkowski Dam. Pardoning me, but is not dam one of the forbidden words? <laughs> Shut whatever the fuck is a mouth on whatever the face on your what you 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 gel headed cunt. A squad of marines made a commando raid to blow the dam, but the mission went bad and they're stranded. We know there are at least two of them alive down there, and our orders are to recover them. Time to fight generic space marines again. Oh, I'm sorry. Izanaki ghost warriors. And you have to set some charges to blow up the dam, and then I just like four minutes, Dalton. Move your ass! You know what you do then? You know what happens? You walk back down this hill, shooting exactly nothing, and then you get back to your ship and do a flyby of the dam. 
that you just had to get a safe distance away from because it was exploding. If this cutscene is right, you basically just fly right into it. It's right off screen. It wouldn't be there. If anything, it'd be in the power relay panel. Oh no, something is wrong with the ship. Oh, he's adorable. I'm gonna call him Charlie. What the hell was that? Sea goat. Must have picked it up when we lifted those marines from Sanctuary. That's the only place they grow, little bastards. What are you, a fucking park ranger now? Can you fix it? No, we gotta land. Damn. Damn. Why is Ida so much not liking Isaac? Years ago, Isaac and Ida served on a Terran capital ship together. He was the launch officer. During a fight with the Scar, the ship took a series of hits. Fighter crew was getting ready to launch. He opened the airlock too soon and they were sucked into space. She calls it dereliction of duty. They beat off the Scar, but her friends were dead. They beat off the Scar. They beat off the Scar. Hold on. Oh, shit. Fuck. Just let me pick some of this delicious low hanging fruit here. Ha! They were giving the Scar handies. No, no, wait, wait, no, 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 no! Roger that, put him in the box. Okay, I'm back. That was, uh, I, I was fun. What are we doing? Guys, it's been a month. That's longer than anybody else in the world remembered Unreal 2. Right, next mission, you gotta lay down some shields and some turrets while these guys attack you again. It's boring. Check this out. Some nice moves, man. Very cool. Isaac, you done? Yep. Now can we leave? Roger that. So there's that mission. What's next? We've discovered a secret Izanagi facility on Sulphuron. Go down there, acquire the data, and bring it back. Oh. I clear out this base, and then I order some guys around, and I defend the position, and wait it out. Extruding myself in your cabin. So, okay, Nabon, what can I do for you? I still do not understand why the hero of the Strider Wars is serving on this ship. You got a minute? I'll tell you. Ida was a child prodigy, a strategic genius. She was an international 3D chess master by the age of 10. All backstory in this game comes in the form of the player character explaining everyone's history to this blue douche. Ida has a dark past full of guilt, but don't worry because Daban is always there to explain why the actions were logically justified. It was a brilliant victory, but because they died, millions lived. She knows that. She made the choice, but she's never forgiven herself. As she grew older, she rebelled. She thinks the military made her a monster, and now she doesn't trust them or anyone else. You should tell her to trust you. It doesn't quite work that way. Oh, fucking just, just stop. Just stop trying. Wouldn't it have been easier to just rehash the last game? This dialogue and this plot and everything is just bad. It's almost completely irrelevant to anything happening. I'm collecting objects that will do something bad when they come together. It's like the crystals for Crash Bandicoot, except- Oh, hey, Charlie! Charlie! Oh, Isaac, you do. She's so cute and scared of everything. I just want to take him home, put him in a cage, feed him whatever the fuck a sea goat eats. I hope that thing isn't pregnant. 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 So you start this mission and you're immediately under fire from a guy with a rocket launcher, which means they must have seen your ship land, and they just let that happen. This mission is special because you hit not one, not two, not three, but four loading screens in the middle of it. You have to find a scientist, and he's an asshole. 
Maybe if you didn't miss so often, you'd have more ammo. Maybe fuck you. Maybe carry a fucking gun yourself and shoot some of these guys, huh? How about that? So you take this guy to the roof, and then guess what happens? Just guess. You have to place turrets, shields, and soldiers to defend this position while he does something with the computers. I swear to God, I'm gonna kill it. Ida, we're in the clear. Get us out of here. On the way. Orders from Drexler say to terminate all surviving non-military personnel. Who, Meyer? I'm not leaving him behind. So we go from joking about killing this guy, and me actually trying to kill this guy, to it would be wrong. I don't even get a choice. You don't even see this guy again after this cutscene. You just mentioned that you dropped him off somewhere. You could have left Meyer back there on Janus. In fact, you should have. Why did you smuggle him out and drop him on Vistula? What was I supposed to do? Shoot him? What is the point? Where is my flak cannon? Contact! Were you sick of soldiers? Tough shit. Time for more. Next mission, you have to get into this, uh, Independence Day mothership thing. And getting attacked by more floating monsters. I'm nearly comatose at this point, not just because I haven't slept in three days. I've just been playing Unreal 2, and if I can't, I can't fall asleep, I can't, I, I can't fall asleep. He was in the Marines once before. They threw him out. Why? Because he thought for himself. They called it departing from established mission parameters. One time, this colonel ordered him to leave a wounded civilian behind. He told the colonel to shove it and dragged her out anyway. So, he was a hero. So he was court-martialed, cashiered, kicked out. Wait, they actually threw Dalton out of the Marines for disobeying an order and saving a person's life. Really? He's such a good guy. I know because Isaac is telling me, or telling Nabon, or shoehorning character development into the game so fucking clumsily that I can't believe someone wrote it. Do they hire writers? Or a writer? Or too many writers? Look, I can't go on with this stupid briefing. Why are we doing this, John? If Drexler is so worried about someone combining the artifacts... I don't care. I can't. It is not within the bounds of human faculties for me to give a shit at this point. Let's not give the artifacts to Dressler. We don't know what they're gonna do, but they're powerful according to ancient glyphs. Let me summarize. I'm delivering these artifacts to Drexler. No, don't trust him. He's evil. Not that he appears anywhere in this game. I'm gonna let you go and do this even though the human race might be at risk. Okay. How you holding up, Isaac? Doing all right, boss. Oh, right. Isaac has a drinking problem, I forgot. Hold on, just, uh... I've been clean, boss. Not a drop since I came on oh, board. Jesus. Was I supposed to care that this guy has a drinking problem? He doesn't even have any booze. He just, I guess, really wants it. And Dalton has some very powerful and encouraging words for him. You're stronger than you think. How do you figure? You've worked deals with every supply sergeant from here to Daedalus to scrounge us equipment, right? Yeah. So? You could have smuggled booze on board any time you wanted. Is this game? This is not game. Nobody this is first person PSA. Now. Time for some more robots, except these robots have little helpers that come out and repair them. And I'm still waiting to get a flat cannon, but this game decided to have boring weapons instead of the kind of weapons you'd find in an Unreal game. Seriously, you had a six-barreled rocket launcher, a gun that shot toxic waste, a gun that shot bouncing razor-sharp blades that could decapitate enemies, and the flat cannon, which is just the best. And in this game, you get pistol, shotgun, machine gun, rocket launcher, grenade launcher, Sniper rifle. What's next, a laser? A railgun? And it shoots out a laser pulse that's sort of like a conventional railgun. Fuck you. Can't wait to turn these damn artifacts over to Drexler. What's the plan? We keep him here in orbit. You go down and talk to Drexler. He tells you in person where he wants them. That way there's no radio transmission and no chance of unfriendly ears hearing where we're gonna land. Once you have all the artifact pieces, you have to deliver them to Drexler. Or I guess you have to deliver them to Hawkins now. But the place from the intro cutscene is overrun with Scar! Yep, they're back! There's like two dozen of them, and I can take them down with the railgun laser in no time. And the ones you can't, they come swarming from one canyon with turret guns and a squad of marines. We're back to this now. Eventually, you beat them off, and...
So yeah, they're dead now. They made a heroic sacrifice to keep the artifacts out of Drexler's hands. General Drexler has had nothing to do with any of this. It's all been Hawkins. Of course, it was the guy that actually appears in this story. I would never have guessed. How could I not have seen it? Hawkins. Damn bastard. They made a heroic sacrifice to keep the artifacts away from Hawkins, but on the other side of the loading screen, he already has them and is experimenting on Akai. It's good to know that they learn the value of sacrifice so they could make a sacrifice with no value. You just walk in on Hawkins. You might think you would fight him as a boss or something, but no. You just blow him away in a cutscene. With Ida's gun, because sweet, sweet revenge from the grave. Oh, and after that you have to escape the ship using this new black hole generator thing, which just sucks things away. I was wondering what was insta-killing me before, but now I know. You escape the ship and listen to some final words from your dearest friends. Greetings, Marshal. I am saluting you yet again. You are many good men. Stop. I'm done. It's over. I beat the game. Turn it off. This is the kind of game I would expect from a no-budget European studio in the early 2000s. The story is dumb and told mostly through the most forced expositional tool I've ever seen in all of media, so it's got that going for it. How do you fuck up Unreal? If anything, Unreal should at least not be so cripplingly boring. You got a game where you fight different and interesting aliens? Make most of the levels have you shoot generic soldiers. Got interesting weapons? Replace them with generic ones. It's like a prototype for modern FPS games. Fuck this game and curse the space on my hard drive where it once sat. I'm gonna defrag after this, Doc, so don't put anything on the schedule for a day. Maybe I can sleep for real? Yes, CV-11. You may sleep soon. Bring him his sleep juice. Doctor. Can I have it in my mouth this time? In that most important year of PC gaming, 1998, when id Software and 3D Realms ruled the world, Epic Mega Games had been working for years on their own Doom clone, or Quake clone. A 3D answer to id Software's technical dominance. It was hyped. I remember seeing an ad as a child that stuck with me forever. It's called Unreal, because it is. As far as I can tell, development started around 1994 with James Schmalz, the founder of Digital Extremes, who showed his work off to future big name Cliff Lazinski, better known as Cliffy B, and then showed it to Tim Sweeney, who showed it to his friends, who showed it to their friends. So, Epic Mega Games, in partnership with Digital Extremes, started working on their Quake Killer. It was apparently so impressive that our old friends at GT Interactive snagged the publishing rights in 1996, two years before the game would come out. The hype was real. You could say the hype was... No, Sivvy, you're better than that. No, I'm not. The hype was unreal. Aww. Actionable pun detected. Let me have it. Ah! Whatever they were trying to do, they were playing with the big kids. Out there writing an engine to challenge the supremacy of intangible ether spawn and former Metaverse voice of reason John Carmack. The impressive engine that would become a household name later on was developed by Tim Sweeney, although every time I previously said that Tim Sweeney did something, someone has come in to correct me and to tell me that Tim Sweeney did not, in fact, do it. So, for the moment, we will say that Tim Sweeney did the thing, and going forward, especially with greasy business up ahead, we will also credit Tim Sweeney. I can't even begin to tell you how important the Unreal Engine has become. Chances are that your favorite game was made with it, because everyone and their mother can get a copy of the Unreal Engine now and do stupid things with it, like make an indie FPS game or haphazardly throw meshes and lighting together and call it a virtual set. Originally scheduled for release in April of 1997, it was delayed significantly because everyone realized it sucked, and one of the complaints was that it was too long. 
long, which in retrospect is hilarious considering the playthrough I just did, adjusted for deaths and replaying areas, would probably take about 10 hours. It's a very long game for the time. Unreal was released in May of 1998 to rave reviews and good sales. That's, what, four years of development? And GT couldn't give Blood 2 another few months in the oven? And coming out five months or so before Half-Life helped them a little, they didn't get immediately trounced by Valve's Game Changer. Is Half-Life a better game? Yeah, probably, because Unreal is still deeply rooted in the old style of FPS in more ways than Half-Life, though they are similar in ways I'll get into later, so still an important milestone in gaming, especially for 3D graphics. Funny thing, though, recently Epic announced that it was removing practically everything related to Unreal from digital storefronts. This filled me with a kind of impotent nerd rage that I try to avoid because it's impotent nerd rage that doesn't mean anything. I could toss out a tweet about how Epic sucks, Actually, I did, but since I don't care about getting Twitter likes and honestly would have been fine with the platform being nuked with a low-orbit ion cannon even before Elon Musk took over, because Twitter was almost never good, listen. I am but a humble pinnacle of online entertainment who started a show as a shitpost where I talked about old FPS games and was forced to adapt in order to have some kind of longevity on this platform, and one day I hope to do that. The point is that I am, in much more accessible terms, a YouTuber. And we are mostly clowns, so I'm not questioning their business decisions. I'm sure they save money by shutting down servers. I don't know why they had to delist the single-player games too, but they did. The world has already forgotten Unreal 2 The Awakening, which, you know, to be fair, may have helped kill single-player Unreal games by being incredibly boring, reheated sci-fi sausage casing filled with sawdust. Damn. It seems a little uncouth to remove Unreal from storefronts. I'm sure they're saving money by shutting down servers and maybe putting it towards the rumored free-to-play version of Unreal Tournament 3. You know, the worst Unreal Tournament game, even though it's fine, I guess. It works, it's not terrible. Blue flag taken. Red flag returned. Red flag taken. I've got our flag. I have the flag. It came out when arena shooters were on the decline and no one cared, so Epic started focusing on Gears of War. But. Tim Sweeney, a capable businessman, jumped onto the games-as-a-service model real early, not wanting to be beholden to the whims of a publisher anymore, and maybe I'm wrong to put this all on Tim Sweeney, but it seems like he's the major player here. The old business model wasn't working anymore, which we can assume means it wasn't profitable enough. And then you read that they didn't want to make Gears of War 4 because it would cost them a hundred million dollars, and maybe, you know, maybe you're spending too much on your games? Maybe? Nah, it can't be that. Epic was developing Fortnite as early as 2011, looking towards the games-as-a-service model. They asked Chinese mega-financers Tencent for help, and by help, I mean $330 million. Allegedly, Tencent has no creative input on Fortnite or other Epic properties, whichever ones of those still exist somewhere. But when someone has a 40% stake in your company, the incentive is to do whatever turns a profit, no? In comes Tencent, out goes Cliff Blazinski, out goes a lot of the old guard, not wanting to take part in this brave new world. Maybe saying that Unreal is what defined Epic is stupid nowadays, same as saying that Jill of the Jungle defines it. But to say, your money is no longer good here over the single-player games? Why? And without even a source code release for the original versions of the engine? I don't think it's a question of what's good business. The voracious eldritch horrors that decide what is good business don't want the profits from over here becoming loss over here, where that series that built your house, the one that is the namesake for the engine that runs your money printers, the technology that is used for Hollywood spectacle, and industrial light and magic that has powered countless games that have themselves become legends. Seeing Epic become what it is today, highly, highly successful, only to abandon the only thing I ever truly loved them for makes me wonder if they weren't always this company. When you look at Unreal, you see passion, you see people striving for innovation not simply because it would be profitable, but because they wanted to deliver an experience to gamers that they wouldn't forget. An adventure for us to dive into, you on an uncharted planet, crossing a hostile landscape, discovering alien civilizations, fighting alone and overcoming. Walking out of a crashed prison ship into the unknown and for the first time gazing upon a breathtaking environment with richness unseen by players before, leaving the confines of a boring metal sci-fi tomb and into the vast living planet of Napoli. It's called Unreal because it is. Unreal is awesome.
I've been attempting to make an Unreal video on and off for about two years. There were a couple of important things that came together to make this finally happen. One, I wasn't playing on the hardest skill available in these newfangled community patches from old Unreal, which play around with the labels for difficulty settings and decided to call Unreal skill very hard at one point. The version I'm using now is 227J, not the official polished release of 227i, for one very important reason, HUD scaling. We're playing Unreal in 4K, because no matter what you say about this game, it is beautiful and deserves it. But if I can't scale the HUD, it's gonna be a HUD for the microbacteria living on the backs of ants. I'm also using the basic DirectX 9 renderer, because the fancier DirectX 11 one, when it does occasionally work for me, is too shiny. These DirectX renderers and old Unreal community patches are what we have because Epic won't release a source code. It would be really cool if they did, and I wonder if it's in some kind of legal limbo because of the sheer number of games that you on Unreal Tech, even the first Unreal Tech, like, I don't know, off the top of my head, Deus Ex, Duke Nukem Forever 2001, play the DNF Restoration Project, first slice out now. I'm gonna get medieval on your ass. Clive Barker's Undying, maybe some others, I'll look it up. Jesus Christ. So we're playing Unreal, on Unreal, and I'm sure there's someone out there saving at a campfire and Ludovicoing themselves to footage of people enjoying video games asking why I'm not playing on Extreme Nightmare or Ultra Unreal. Well, let me explain that with a clip. This is meant for co-op. Unreal is the masochism skill, I promise. So let's actually, finally start the game now that all the housekeeping is out of the way. Oh, finally ready, huh? Took you long enough. Prepare the package. Reach minimum safe distance or don't. I don't really care. You're good people, 18. So, Unreal starts off a little differently than you'd expect for a pre-Half-Life shooter, because story things are happening. Prisoner 8, over 9, escaping. You're a prisoner on the Vortex Rikers, which has been taken down by the gravitational pull of a mysterious planet. Everybody's dead except you, those who have already escaped, and the soon-to-be dead. You're mostly dead yourself. We should get out of here. Up the elevator, grab the Universal Translator, maybe stay a little while to read the stuff around the cell block. The ship isn't gonna blow up while you're doing this. We have some helpful announcements. Violence will not be tolerated. Lights out at 8 p.m. Someone's gonna start a prison riot to celebrate their birthday. It being your birthday won't get you out of trouble for that, trust me. Grab five health from a blood-filled toilet with bloody bandages on top, execute a prisoner downstairs... Oof, somebody didn't wet the sponge. These readables paint a picture for us, which is good because we won't be talking to many humans over the course of this game. The Vortex Rikers is taking its crew to a prison moon. It's rough. Jump into a massive vent and make it out of the cell block so Unreal can show you some of the pretty graphical effects it has. The lighting and the fog, which was mind-blowing at the time. The screams of your fellow prisoners and crew echoing through this dark tunnel before you reach the command center. Go straight to the armory, which has no weapons but some health and a useful bit of armor. We'll be up to 100 HP before leaving the ship. Most of that'll come from the med lab. Then, a human voice, something we will not hear again for a while. Shit, what the hell is that? It's gone before we can face it, which is probably good since we're only getting our first weapon now, which is the dispersion pistol. Our recharging emergency energy pew pew gun. And I can't tell you how important it's gonna be later in the game, just you wait. Break some glass to fully top off our health and admire ourselves in the shiny mirrored surfaces. That's not the default player model, it's the one I've been using, but still. Mirrored surfaces in a 3D game is pretty wild and an absolute flex by the developers. Pushing the 3D accelerator cards of the time to their melting point. Now that we have the ability to break glass, we can leave the ship. A hatch opens, you drop down, and the gunmetal sci-fi corridors you've been in, which were impressive enough for the time, are left behind. The more stereotypical futuristic human sci-fi stuff that would come to characterize the series after this game is shed as you enter Nilev's Falls. Look at this. The color, the life. Now listen to it. Because Unreal soundtrack, like future entries in the series, rules. Adds so much to the atmosphere, which is probably Unreal's greatest strength. 
I want you to take a look at what happens when I walk out of this ship. While Half-Life explored the possibilities of immersion in a linear narrative, so did Unreal. And sometimes, just sometimes, I think Unreal did it better. And right here is that one place. The first time I felt the gaming scene shift under my feet while playing. A tiny bipedal rabbit thing bounces towards me, takes a look, and jumps away. As you can see from the dead humans in their stories, this may be the last friendly NPC we meet. We jump into the water because there's a couple magazines down there. The tiny fish nibble at us. Below the cliff we've crash landed on, another building, another lake, a beautiful waterfall, giving us the impression of so much more space than there actually is. And the skybox, which is kind of clunky, but it's what we had, and it looked a lot better in 640 by 480 we're not going down there yet. We approach an unnatural looking metal and brick structure and are harassed by a tentacle, the first hostile enemy you'll meet on this skill. It shoots little spikes and is an annoyance. Like most early game enemies, I open up with a secondary blast from the dispersion pistol. That secondary fire can be charged and has a bit of splash damage. You also have the auto mag, your first and one of the few hit scan weapons in the game that can save your life. But if your target isn't very mobile, opening up with a free shot isn't a bad idea. You might recognize the auto mag and most weapons in this game since they were the standard loadout for almost all Unreal games in the future. Normally here you would first encounter a lesser brood. <laughs> When your first enemies shoot rockets at you, you know this game is gonna go hard. And on Unreal skill, there's two of them. And then three. Brutes aren't even remotely the worst things you'll have to deal with. Honestly, they're my least hated enemy in the first level. My most hated is the Cave Manta, granted ludicrous health thanks to the skill level. But we're mildly hurt, so we'll grab some Nolly Healing Fruit, the most potent common health pickup in the game. Something about the level design in this game that strikes me now, but didn't really at the time, is how tall and imposing everything is. FPS games well into the 2000s didn't really get scale right. If you don't believe me, go play a late 90s or early 2000s FPS game in VR and you'll understand. In Unreal, that's amplified, with purpose. Everything here is bigger and meaner than you are. A couple more brutes and you'll find the other side of this tunnel in the entrance to the next level, also guarded by a brute. You can choose to explore the warehouse here and grab some ammo or healing fruit before going into the mines. We've only scratched the surface of Unreal. With barely a loading screen, we walk right into the next area, almost as if we're doing the Half-Life level transitions. But we're not because there's no going back. Push boxes, grab ammo, blow a hole in the wall to reveal a secret cave with one health pickup? I don't really need it. Oh, and a bit of text. It talks about a village on the other side of the mountain. We'll get there, there's something very important there. While trying to turn off a force field, the game begins to show us its cards. Its devilish combat starts here with the introduction of the Scar. Trapped in a tunnel with a scar is a worst case scenario. This is a nightmare. One of the most threatening monster closets in gaming. This thing leaps at you in the dark. It doesn't move like the other enemies. It doesn't move like any enemy that anyone had seen in an FPS game before. That is due to the work of a man named Steven Polge, an AI programmer who caught the eye of Epic Games when he created ReaperBot, a fully computer controlled deathmatch bot for Quake. So now in Unreal we have opponents that move like deathmatch players might, and that that is terrifying under normal circumstances and a plague on the Unreal skill. Because what this boils down to, the most important part of it, is that most Unreal weapons are projectiles. And these enemies are very, very good at dodging projectiles, as well as sending them your way, leading their targets, and going after you with the reaction time of a blood cultist. Their weakness is hit scan weapons, and you're only going to have one of those, this measly pistol, for a while. And always, always, Double tap the scar. They can fake death. So can you, but it's probably only effective in multiplayer. Let's go back a bit. 
I was fighting this Scar because I had to distract him. If I didn't, he would have killed this nice fellow, one of the indigenous creatures to this planet, the Nali. The Nali will help you because they think you're their prophesied savior. And if you beat this game on Unreal, they might be right. You want to keep them alive because a lot of them, like this one, will open secrets for you. You know, until a Scar sees them and kills them on sight. Which they do because they're terrible and have taken over this planet. The Nali call them demons from the sky. They came to the planet, subjugated the locals, and are mining for a precious mineral called Teridium. Hey, wait a fucking minute, isn't this the plot of Avatar? Except the humans or the Scar or the Navi aren't quite as peaceful? That's weird. Anyway, keep them alive because this one gives you the Stinger, your first rapid-fire weapon with a secondary that's as close to a shotgun as you'll get for a while. Look at this man, he's just trying to reach inner peace. Every fight against a Scar at this point in the game is gonna be a life or death struggle. You might end up switching to the pistol just because they can't dodge that. You don't want them in your face. It's more important later when there's more armor to be found, but armor will stack. Extra protection is great, total protection is better, which is why you want to keep an eye out for the shield belt. The scar will still fuck you up, but you'll be alive. Even on lower skills, this section of the game is dedicated to proving how dangerous these things are. We want to keep as many Nali alive as possible, especially this one. Here we have the first of four upgrades to our dispersion pistol. The thing morphs in your hand into a deadlier weapon. The upgrade will boost the damage on the primary fire as well as give you a larger ammo pool that you'll go through faster and will recharge slower. Not too much deadlier, for the moment. You'll see. Next room throws two scar at me, and you'll see me panicking here. A semi-important mechanic is the dodge, which lets you double tap your directional buttons to hop that way in order to, well, dodge an attack. Unfortunately, on this skill, they're leading their attacks. First Scar has an accident on these fragile wooden bridges that are placed very dangerously over lava. The trash takes itself out. And the other one won't follow me up here into a possible trap, so I sting him. Dodging can also be useful in platforming since air control isn't like Quake, it kinda sucks in Unreal Gold. So precise platforming isn't very easy or good, it's not something the game asks you to do very often. A lot of platforming is like this here, see this little box? You can't jump very high, this is a Quake killer after all, so shoot this tiny box so you can get a little extra height to pick up the super health pack. It's shiny and blue so it's important. The exit to the mine is guarded by a stronger brute than we've seen before because Unreal's enemy roster is a tiny bit lacking. It is most Mostly different flavors of Scar, or different flavors of Brutes occasionally. But look at this guy, he's massive and he shoots rockets like a Cyber Demon on crack. Cyber Demon on crack, is that the best thing I came up with? As we start to surface, your pistol is still your best friend against Scar. Though we're picking up some ASMD ammo on the way to rectify that. Hold on, I'm not sure this is gonna work. Perfect! Enter the Sacred Passage to clown on Scar who are in such a wide open area that they can't do much of anything to you. This is the entrance to... the fuck? This section of the game is fine for me now, but I remember having a lot of trouble navigating it in my first ten or so playthroughs. It shows off some cool moving brush parts here and there, but mostly it's a confusing mess filled with a new enemy, the Slith, who swim fast and spit toxic goo at you. The toxic goo thing is really only gonna get more confusing later. Oh, and flies. They suck too. That's not to say the Water Temple doesn't have some great things in it. They didn't need to be in a water temple. Let's start with the ASMD shock rifle, a classic Unreal weapon, a mini railgun with a powerful secret. Primary fire is the railgun, secondary is a slower moving projectile, but listen, hey, listen, just between you and me and all the people who play Unreal Tournament, shoot the secondary with the primary. <laughs> And sometimes you can score a decapitation with it. And suck my dick! While you're lost in these water temples, you may be finding notes about this stick of six fires, and how it can only be reached by a warrior who is bathed in the pool of thunder, which spawns... One scar! Which might be a problem for the peaceful Nolly, but we're a hardened criminal with big guns. We're about to get the biggest one yet. 
I never understood why the game loaded you up on ammo for this immediately. You know, if you go into this area, activate some lightning, blow up a wall, and go in to stock up. But I'm happy it does, because even though it's the easiest weapon to dodge, the splash damage is what's helpful. Your primary fire is a rocket, and if you wait a few seconds, it can lock on. Still very dodgeable by the scar, not so much the slith. The secondary will launch a bouncy grenade, but you can also hold down the primary or secondary fire button. Oh, you taste that? That's victory, kids. There is no more satisfying feeling in this game than dumping five or six explosives into one of these tanky bastards and watching them instantly turn into a shower of giblets. Especially if you get the drop on them and delete their ass before they even know it's coming. This happens a lot less in this playthrough because they seem to be able to hear the weapon loading. This weapon proves to me that it's not important that the Scar can dodge your shots. It's important that you can manipulate them to dodge where you want them to, and splash damage them to death. They're also not as good at dodging grenades, I don't know why. The Water Temple is over, we can finally get to a point where the game throws you another curveball. Two right at the start of this level, which seems like overkill. First, two tentacles right at the entrance as you're stuck in water, not cool. And then, once you leave the room, it spawns a scar to follow you. Not today, dickhead. <laughs> Always double tap. The Scar. Not only is this giant building full of tough, relentless Scar warriors, it is, as the title suggests, an arena. I don't think the Scar built it, meaning that the Nolly built it, which is confusing because it's got this first boss fight in it. This is the Titan, the towering, one-hit-killing, rock-slinging dino juggernaut who I died to once just to show off how dangerous he is, yes? That's what I did. Just a fragment of one of the rocks it throws can kill you. This particular arena has a big pillar in the center to use as cover. You won't be so lucky when it shows up in the future. <laughs> After this, a sleepy village with a little church and a secret in the abbey. The Nolly, who abhor violence and won't take up arms themselves, well, they have no problem stashing them around for me. And this one... <laughs> Unreal's most legendary contribution to FPS weaponry beyond anything else is this right here. A supercharged shotgun. I know what you're thinking. This is a shotgun, so It's a fucking anti-aircraft gun, Vincent. Even Child Civvy playing this knew this gun was the greatest in the game. The absolute goat, the king of scar murder, the flat cannon. The primary is a scatter shot of jagged metal. The secondary is like a mortar that'll hit the ground and then launch a scatter shot of jagged metal. The sound of it tearing through a scar is forever embedded into my brain. Perfection. Okay, maybe I like the UT99 one the most, but this one is nearly as good. Unquestionably the MVP of this arsenal. Once you've got this, the Scar don't want to be in your face anymore. In fact, as soon as you get the flat cannon, the game immediately switches to enemies with primarily ranged attacks. It literally changes the game. Unfortunately, for a while, it changes the game to Tyranniax. <laughs> No, I don't care how that's pronounced. An absolutely miserable time. You're not the only thing to crash land on Napoli. Whatever that nasty gravitational pull is doing, it's doing it to other alien races, like this ship of mercenaries. They're not Scar, but they are an alien race that is capable of long-term survival on a planet full of Scar, meaning they are ridiculously tough. They're not quite as good at dodging projectiles as the Scar because they don't have to be. Launch enough projectiles and they activate an impenetrable shield, and they continue to fire hit scans at you from behind it. They also have rockets because those seem to be the standard. You, you cheating bastard! You'll have to plow through about 25 of them before Tyranniax is over. On top of the Sliths, who seem to be attracted to toxic waste and want to live in it. You want to know how desperate I get? I activate a power amplifier. That's an inventory item that can boost your energy weapon's damage output times four. That's right, it's quad damage for energy weapons. But the only energy weapons you have are the ASMD and the dispersion pistol. I'm so desperate that I use it. I try to save it up for special occasions. You'll see why later. The ship is a little confusing to navigate since one of the elevators is blocked off and it's designed symmetrically, so you'll see very similar looking rooms over and over again. Copied and pasted, whole hallways, rooms, etc. 
It's very pretty, though. You need to get to the control center, but not now. There's still buttons to press and things to find. For one, another dispersion pistol upgrade in the central area. Look, it's got a barrel now. Some swimming in toxic goo will get you to the control room, which has the next new weapon, the bio-rifle. I've never really been a fan, but I found myself using it more in this playthrough in desperate times. Eventually, I find an elevator that'll take me out of this terrible place. To Nork's Elbow. Which is a name. And then, desperate times. <laughs> Five mercenaries run a train on me at the entrance to this level, as I am trapped in a box. Thankfully, this is pretty much the last we'll see of these mercenaries, and we can get back to this game being kind of punishing instead of a full-throated war cry at my eardrums. Good lord. The Temple of Andorra is a fine level, a decent Unreal location, just a nice self-contained area where you light some fires. It's a temple to a Nali deity. Oh. I'm interested in this religion. Very interested. Vandora is the Nali goddess of lightning. I love her. I don't care if she's blue. That's a 512 by 512 texture in a game from 1998. That's how much attention to detail the designers needed to fully capture the grace of Vandora. And I'm not blurring a set of titties here. I'm blurring two sets of titties. Drop into this pool and take a long swim to find a secret super health and another dispersion pistol upgrade. That's three out of four, we're doing good. New enemies you'll find include the gas bags, who are a joke. They fly, which is annoying, but they're slow and so is their projectile. It can still dodge rockets, so I'll usually pistol it. Then there's the Scar Infantry. What's worse than Scar? Scar that can carry all the same weapons that you can. Yes, that includes the Flat Cannon. This one had a bio rifle, so he's not a problem. This one has a dispersion pistol, non-upgraded, thankfully. They get a little more dangerous. Most of them in this level are locked in these little rooms like reading or something, I don't know. This one has a stinger, that's a little worse. Ooh, Nolly Fruit Seeds, these'll come in handy. The level ends with another titan fight with much less cover so I can show you just how easy it is to die from a random rock. This rock, right here. I'm not saying I could survive getting hit with a rock like that, but I wouldn't be jibbed by it. Now it's time for the ISV Cran. Kind of the middle section of Unreal, and from now on I'll be avoiding killing Titans as much as possible because they're an ammo sponge and I'm not wasting my time. There's gas bags too and one scar, but we have a secret weapon. The hangar doors will open for humans. ship is still full of fucking scar. It's really weird how some of the most dangerous places on this planet are the crash ships of other species. When you get to deck four, you enter relatively narrow hallways. There's one scar. He sees you, runs, and sets off the alarm. The alien sets off the alarm on the human spaceship and you go over to a panel and it says panel rewired to trip alarm, system accessed by unauthorized users. The scar ran into the thing that was not an alarm to activate an alarm, either knowing it was an alarm or not knowing, but I... The ISV Cran, even on lower skills, is a gauntlet of human suffering. I don't want this scar to set off the alarm, so I try a couple of times to stop the speedy prick from getting there, and eventually I do. You see that? You see why I double tapped them? I'm not sure if this is exactly how this works, I haven't opened the level up in Unreal Ed or anything, but I'm 90% sure that once you kill a Scar here, another one spawns. There's at least a half dozen that spawn before a grate opens in the hallway where you can progress. You can take the vents to a flooded room to hit a switch that'll let you into the warehouse. You get the Razor Jack, which is like, not useless exactly, but the function of being able to slice a monster's head off after like three shots to the head is not worth the razor sharp projectile bouncing around the arena that can behead you in one. Again? Again! This is why I double tap the goddamn ISV Crane's slippery scar. Fighting scar in tight spaces is a nightmare. The designers know it. That's why they were introduced that way. And the Crane is here to take full advantage of it. Like locking you in a room and dropping four of them from the ceiling. And once you kill the fourth, the door opens. I hate that kind of scripting. It's so goddamn inorganic and annoying. Only once do I get to clown on a scar with explosives. 
And I think that's because the extremely loud hydraulic doors covered my sound. Still, love that. The ship has a coolant leak, but I can't deal with that yet, because I've got to deactivate the force fields by destroying two cores. That's not where I go first, I don't remember why. Instead, I get trapped in this long shaft, because to exit it again, you need to get to the top. And another half dozen scar, one by one, come out of these tunnels here, and you have to kill every one of them so that the ship can let you access the good stuff up there. Now, you might think that this scar is about to fall to his death, and under normal circumstances you might be right. However, this really tall shaft is not really tall enough. So where did he... Oh, you sneaky bastard. Okay, here's a move I like to call the Cliff Shocker. As you can see, he was killed by the Cliff Shocker, and now these ramps extend and I can have some health again. Okay, kill the power, but then reroute the power so I can take the turbo lift to deck one. My advice on deck one is to run. Just run. The game is gonna keep spawning Scar every time you do this thing, hitting switches in three different rooms to deactivate a laser, but then reactivate it, because otherwise all the Scar chasing you will continue chasing you. Scar infantry are back now too with their shields, and I honestly never thought I could score a headshot with a dispersion pistol. Cool. If I had to guess, I would say that the ISV Cran was a science research vessel where the experiments were based on using alien DNA to trigger their trap doors. And a blob monster. I do not understand why there's a blob monster here. Like everything in this game, it looks way too pretty for 1998, but this is the only time it shows up. Except for once in Return to Napoli, but we're not gonna see that because I skipped it, because Return to Napoli is kind of silly, and you can do that kind of thing, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the easiest thing on the ship to fight. At one point, I'm so desperate that I drop a Nolly fruit seed and wait. There we go, now we're in good shape. It's long past time we get off this ship. I make my way to the flight deck, hit a button to reveal an escape teleport, and yeet myself into the unknown that can't possibly be any worse than this. Oh, God damn it! This level has three titans that I run past because no, I'm not wasting the ammo on them when I can just walk to this gate that I need to jump to unlock because I am a tiny human, a short king. So that's five titans we've avoided now and left to live their lives in peace. They're indigenous to this planet, so I'm sure the Nolly can deal. It's at this point in the game that the Scar infantry are given eight ball guns, which sucks. However, they are on narrow ledges above a cliff above lava. And now we enter the Sun Spire, which might not be the worst level in Unreal, but it is the worst level in Unreal. Describing where and when things happen is fruitless. It would be like trying to describe color to a blind person. You see, a lot of these areas are copied and pasted whole hallways rooms, so it gets a little confusing. And these copy-pasted hallways and rooms are placed in a giant tower where the way to progress up the tower is known only to the Nali Elders and the extremely antisocial person who designed it. Half the hallways are completely dark, the level introduces the worst enemy in the main game, the Scar pupae, baby Scar, who don't shoot anything at you, they're just way spongier than they should be, make irritating noises, come in packs, and have removed any reservations I previously had about killing babies. So check that off, 18, you hear me? I think this means that the Scar are bug-like? They have a queen. We'll briefly meet her later. There's a trick to ascending the Sun Spire, and that is running around like an idiot and encountering absolutely brutal rocket-shooting infantry around every corner. It is a bad time. You know, I would have believed that the Scar took over and subjugated a peaceful race of aliens without making them harder than an Everclear smoothie. Gas bags fly around the more open parts of the tower. They're no problem. Up this elevator and crap! With the tentacles now! You know what? I'm out of flat cannon ammo, so there's only one thing left to do. Okay, I can do a little better than that.
bitches. Eventually, and I do mean eventually, this level, no matter how many times I play it, takes me about 45 minutes. It's very pretty, though. I got the minigun somewhere, too. The minigun shoots bullets, so hit scans, which is great. It eats through ammo. It eats through it even faster with the secondary fire, which shoots bullets faster. Not a complicated weapon at all, and still nowhere near as good as the flat cannon. You reach the top of the sun spire where there's a wonkavator into the sky. To power it, you shoot some lightning into a crystal. Then, what you do right is you waste so much time looking on the edges of the top of the spire for secrets and gathering items that you have to go back down and shock the crystal again to get the Wonkavator back down. Now we're in the sky and this game becomes a lot nicer to the player. I'm not sure if it means to, but it does. This is what Unreal is all about. Cool alien spaces. These guys here, though, the crawl? Absolute joke. Have none of the acrobatic abilities of the other Scar and carry a stupid staff that shoots easily avoidable projectiles. They can crawl around if you blow their legs off, but otherwise, nah, they're useless. They're not Scar, clearly. According to the lore, they're another race enslaved by the Scar that keep the Nali in line. You know, the peaceful race that'll pick up flat cannons and save them for me to use. I swear I've gotten the rifle earlier than this before. Oh well, here's the rifle. If the flat cannon is the MVP, this is the second in command. High damage hit scan weapon capable of headshots. It's the last weapon I get and probably the most powerful. It even zooms. It doesn't have a scope, but it zooms. Here I am at a serious disadvantage, stuck in water against the Scar infantry, and... Absolutely essential weaponry. I feel bad wasting ammo with it because that stuff is rare. Look at the fucking size of the ammo pickup versus the gun. I don't know what caliber that is, it looks like it could down a T-Rex. This guy right here, his shield isn't even down yet before he's firing a rocket at me. That's mean, that's dirty, he's going off the edge. And his friend... Motherfucker. Upstairs is one of my favorite levels, Napoli Haven, a town on top of this floating mountain where it looks like the Scar are just there studying the Nolly from behind glass. It feels the most like a place in any of these maps. They're growing crops, they have livestock, libraries, and inn, sewers. <laughs> The whole thing gives the impression that there was a society here that's been completely taken over. And the simple visuals here of the floating islands surrounding it in the void, the vastness of it gives you the impression that your journey has taken you so far across the landscape of this planet. There's a sense of scale to it that you just don't see in a lot of games, especially not in 1998. Sure, you can traverse the Black Mesa Research Facility all you like, but it doesn't feel like there's a whole planet outside of it in quite the same way. Yeah, even if that planet is Earth. I have torn a path over this planet trying to escape, and we've still got a long way to go. Just look at this. Oh, also... I don't care how good their AI is, they're not surviving that fall. A couple of switches will get you into an underwater tunnel that'll take you to the Scar Outpost where there's a ship I can't fly. Into another church, but not one dedicated to Her Majesty Vandora. I mean, it's already been defiled by the presence of the Scar and their machinery. There's a teleporter in the catacombs to take us to Valora Pass, a short level where we are promptly assaulted by a scar. This presents a problem. That's the last power-up for the dispersion pistol. I have to get it. I can choose not to and move on. But as soon as I pick it up, the bridge to the next area drops away until I kill this stone titan. So I guess I have to kill the stone titan. That's not too bad. There's a ton of cover here. That is just a fucking evil pattern. Okay, now that's done. It's on to... <laughs> We're going to... <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> We're going to... Bluff? Ever Smoking. Not just a 1970s children's show starring puppets that the network was too out of touch to realize was made by a bunch of hippies smoking seedy low-grade Tijuana dirt weed. Bluff Ever Smoking is also my favorite level in Unreal because it is just a massive, open, beautiful, rich tapestry of everything I actually love about this game. The story and the lore buried just beneath the surface and told through the locations, of which there are many. A Nolly hideout on top, a Scar prison in the mountain, a cemetery, a crypt with actual Nolly ghosts that even though they're very much dead, still help you and give you supplies, even a sewer? 
the locations themselves all feeling like they have a purpose. And also, that purpose is written down. You escape the prison through an underwater tunnel used by the Nali, and on the other side is their hideout, where they're more than willing to give you a hand. Or four. This one opens a secret with a shield belt and a mirror so I can show the effect off. This level is a perfect encapsulation of the kind of design we lost for quite a while in shooter games after Half-Life. This is what Gaben took from us, but he did give us steam so I think we'll call it even, praise be upon him, and Vandora. Mostly what we have to do in this level is get access to the hydroelectric shipping cart that'll take us out of here. There's some force field deactivating along the way across the whole damn map itself, but there's so much to see and discover that I don't mind how open-ended everything is. This is all peak Unreal in my mind, the highest point, one we'll never see again because they stopped making single player Unreal games in 1999. No, we still don't count Unreal 2, that's not an Unreal game, that's Captain Dalton and his misfit crew do boring human military bullshit and I will never ever care. As we finish the level grabbing the extra dispersion pistol power up that does nothing but refill your ammo, we're forced to say goodbye to... <laughs> bluff ever smoking. May it forever smoke on that bluff. The cellars at Dasa Pass are a joke level, I will give them no more attention than I need to, and showing you two areas will give you the gist, okay? The first is hallways that continuously repopulate with crawl, so it's like those bits in the ISV Cran, except not at all challenging, really. And the second is hallways that continuously repopulate with crawl, and also a titan. Oh, and another sewer. But sewers were never as green as they were in Unreal. There's a boat ride to show off how pretty the game is. I already know how pretty the game is, I've been playing it for eight hours. Nolly Castle 2, which obviously it's pretty, they use a beefed up version of it for the title screen. This is a map that's also huge and open, but not nearly as cool as... The, the one with the funny name. You need to get access to the dungeon of this castle. Strange thing to have for a peaceful alien race. I think the Nolly are hiding something from us. To get into the dungeon, you don't need a key. You need to defeat the five-eyed demon in the tower. That sounds... Not good. And getting up to the tower is a pain because of infantry, obviously. I leap in, my shield that I haven't used up to this point because it's practically useless since it's stationary. I use that and it's a giant gas bag. So giant that it can't dodge my projectiles. Trash. That's just a distraction from the real boss coming up. Once you make it through the dungeon, Now, I don't know why the Scar Warlord walked into a Hot Topic and took everything within reach. Maybe because when you're a two-story rocket launcher carrying Super Alien, you can just do that. But not here, not on my watch! I could do an extended battle against him and his tanky projectile dodging utter BS. I could do that. I'm not going to. There's a stalactite above him that'll fall if you shoot at it that does a pretty good amount of damage to him. And the name of the game is Outputting Ludicrous Amounts of Damage, which is why I saved up an energy amplifier. You remember that dinky last resort dispersion pistol I've been upgrading this whole time? Well, every shot from it does close to 100 damage. Now multiply that by four. Now he's a smart boy and he doesn't want to come into this hallway, but he will. And after only six shots from the powered up dispersion pistol, he taps out, he teleports away. He'll be back. The next area, I think, is the hardest one I have to deal with. I had to, like, strategize. So it's completely dark, there's an unknown number of heavily armed infantry, and an unknown number of pupae just to make your life miserable. We need a choke point. And to finally use this invisibility power-up that I've had stashed away for such an occasion. Sneak by, go downstairs, hit the lights, make a barricade to slow them down, because as soon as you alert them, and there's lots, they're coming. You see this console? <laughs> Don't touch it, it's an alarm. Swear to God, that is just mean. It looks like it might open this door here. No, it sends every scar in the place to your location. come from upstairs, use bouncy projectiles to deter them from advancing and blast them to hell. Grab some more rockets by dash jumping, 
More will come. Trap a scar behind a box and use the secondary on the razor jack to humiliate him. Snatch Pibble from Hen. Pick up everything from this room before leaving. You're gonna need it. I know the loading up a bunch of explosives and jibbing a scar is satisfying. <laughs> but doing it and somehow getting a headshot is only slightly less satisfying. The entrance to the Scar Mothership is guarded by like four infantry guys with rocket launchers, so I'm using the last of my invisibility to get in there. This is the end game. This laser trap is... I hate this. It's playing with my eyes and I can't properly follow where the lasers are going because of the scrolling texture. The lasers are as thick as a Scottish Terrier and an eyesore and my brain can't process it. We have to shut down the reactor to get the reserve power going so we can get access to the Queen. This is, while easier than the last level, still a challenge that calls for a montage. <laughs> You're dead to grow my fruit seeds! Oh, look who's back! Ain't so tough without your big lava mountain, are ya? The generator blows up, and now we get to go through the mothership again, this time in the dark. Thankfully, with an upgraded flashlight that'll practically never run out of battery life. Oh yeah, I never mentioned the flashlight. There's a flashlight. I'm running to where I need to go, occasionally stopping for supplies, but mostly pushing forward to find that one door that wouldn't let me in before. Fighting green transparent scar for some reason, before coming across the Queen's final guard. The Scar Berserker. Big corn-fed bastard. Okay, second to last guard. There's still one more. Finally, we arrive at the source. It's time to abort your whole friggin' species. On this planet, anyway. The Scar are gonna go extinct without their queen. She has a shield. She teleports. It doesn't matter. I've been playing this too long. She's going down. <laughs> Now, as the ship, for some reason, crumbles around us, it's time to make our escape. And as Prisoner 849 escapes the atmosphere, they are still stuck in a tin can in space, but alive, and too tough for the army of Scar. I'm okay with this. Got me a couple of Nolly fruit seeds, I can get some crops going since they grow anywhere. We crash landed a prisoner and then set the Scar on the path to extinction, and the Nolly on the path to freedom. Save the world. But that's not where it ends, right? Epic Mega Games, which they were still called at the time, didn't really do Return to Napoli. Although Cliffy B's name is on some of these levels, because I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know how they repurposed unused beta content for expansion packs later on? Yeah. Return to Napoli was released in 1999 and then bundled with the original game as Unreal Gold in 2000, which was my first exposure to Unreal. I've never played Unreal without it having Return to Napoli stapled to it. I may have been unfair to Return to Napoli in the past, but only because it has a dumb story told badly and seems determined to avoid playing like Unreal as much as possible for an expansion pack. But Legend Entertainment, who developed it, 
Well, they were previously known for adventure games when they shifted away from them in the late 90s when shooters were popular, releasing Wheel of Time, and then getting bogged down by Unreal 2 for several years. Legend Entertainment had kind of a rough time with everything. Delays, cutting half the game out in order to ship it, being forced to work with outdated versions of Unreal Engine 2, a thing you'd expect them to not have to worry about. Unreal 2 released on a 2001 build of the engine, in 2003, which is probably why Unreal Tournament 2003 looks and feels a lot better. I didn't realize that Epic was also boning Legend Entertainment. At the time, it seemed insane that you'd purposefully screw over the people developing the sequel to your flagship franchise. Something I'd never thought of, right? Return to Napoli was called Unreal Mission Pack 1. It was the only expansion to come out for Unreal. Another expansion, Steel Dawn, was planned, worked on, and then scrapped later rehabbed and released by the Unreal modding community. It was done by Level Infinity, who you may remember from the Shadow Warrior expansion Twin Dragon, which was planned, worked on, and then scrapped. With the knowledge that as early as 1999, Epic didn't give a rocket jumping fuck about their single player franchises anymore, let's get into Return to Napoli. Prisoner 849 is floating on that ship, probably snacking on some delicious gnarly fruit, doing his prayers to Vandora, when a human ship picks us up and discovers that we're an escaped prisoner. And, uh, it doesn't sit too well with them, but they decide that it's an opportunity, like, immediately they're planning to use you. Permission to use the rescued prisoner for Operation Talon Hunter. The prisoner has extensive knowledge of the planetary surface and hazards. Prisoner 849 is the natural choice to search for the wreck of the Prometheus and recover the Talon data cores. Oh yeah, obviously, I'm sure you don't have crack teams of heavily armed marines that could do this. Like, really tough hombres that could kill this prisoner in less than a second? A day after my so-called rescue, and I'm going back to the surface of the planet. You know, maybe it's a little hypocritical to say that this dude does not sound like a hardened prisoner. The other version, which is activated if you've got a female player skin, sounds a bit better. My job is to find the wreck of another ship, the Prometheus, and recover the data cores for some new secret weapons research project. When I've got the cores, I'm supposed to go to the bridge of the crashed ship and activate the ELT transmitter. The ELT will pinpoint my location for pickup. Yes. For pickup. They need me because they don't know exactly where the Prometheus went down. Fine, good. I'll just search the whole planet then, right? Apparently the Teridium in the planet below is wreaking havoc with their scanners. If anyone can find their missing ship, I can. Yeah, still. I'm a little better prepared than last time. They've given me a military-issue combat assault rifle, a new portable scuba unit for underwater, and this computer log. They've also made logistics drops of ammo, weapons, and other supplies. They call this a salvage mission. I call it a return to hell. Sure, return to hell. What if I told you that return to Napoli, at least on Unreal skill, and probably the others too, is way, way easier. We did already kill the Scar Queen. Maybe we got him demoralized. We don't actually start with a combat assault rifle. That's in a supply drop outside. We do have the dispersion pistol with no upgrades. Fucking roll! Yeah, I don't care, I'm using the clip. That sucks balls. And it makes this the second hardest part of the whole expansion because it starts exactly where the main campaign starts. You're in a similar location, you get an auto mag, you face tentacles and brutes, you go outside and grab the combat assault rifle, your first clue that things are gonna go a little different this time around. Return to Napoli might as well be a victory lap for Prisoner 849. The combat assault rifle, or CAR, is a bullet hose hit scan weapon that fires faster than the minigun, has an alt fire that's like a concentrated blast of five shots, is accurate at a distance of ten parsecs, and is a complete reversal of all the things that Unreal's combat was about. Look at the magazine, it's bigger than the gun. You can't dodge it. It isn't the hardest hitting, and it chews through ammo, but the scar are on the other end of this thing bitching like a Call of Duty pro when someone kills them with a shotgun. <sighs> Filthy Terrans! Combat assault rifles do not belong in video games. The combat assault rifle, unlike more honorable weapons like the Stinger or the Bio Rifle, requires no skill to use and is not at all fun. They are the tools of weak, cowardly humans. This whole level is pretty reminiscent to Unreal's main campaign. In fact, a lot of Return to Napoli follows the same beats. You start in a big open canyon with waterfalls and such, some brick and metal scarge buildings, brutes, tentacles. The brutes are a little bigger this time, but you have an OP hit scan weapon to use, which makes everything easier. And sometimes the game throws something awful at you, like here. Yep, 
I got slime. health kind of bad. Oh look, a nolly fruit plant. Perfect. What about... Let's just powder my ass and chew my food for me, Return to Napoli. This shouldn't even be called Return to Napoli because it seems like the Scar aren't sending their best. Maybe I've killed all the best because this is a breeze. It should be called Revenge of Prisoner 849. Return to Napoli does have some new stuff in it. The first new enemy you'll meet is at the end of the first level. It's a predator. No, not this predator we've already seen. It's this tiny, incredibly fast dinosaur with the AI of a very aggressive goldfish. This is your second clue that Return to Napoli gives no shits about how Unreal plays. This is the least Unreal enemy you could have. It just shows up and runs straight towards you. Sure, it's annoying. It has the self-preservation instincts of a stormtrooper in Kyle Katarn's hunting lodge. I've had cats that could dodge oncoming fire better. The end of each level has a little debriefing and a goddamn scoreboard, like it's trying to pull Unreal back in time to when that mattered. When I looked up and saw the shuttle pulling away, it really hit me. I was back. Like I said, this is Prisoner 849's revenge. So this is back in the John Wick sense. Sure enough, it wasn't long before I ran into a brute. Or ten. At least the combat assault rifle is a powerful weapon. No sign of the Prometheus in this valley of the surroundings. I need to keep searching. It doesn't take too long to find it. Until then, we're continuing to traverse the planet, finding Scar in areas that are so open that fighting them is trivial. Underwater, I find a supply drop with a grenade launcher, which always confused me since the game already has a grenade launcher. You won't see it all that much. Here's some hopelessly desperate crawl to test it out on. This is taking too long. I jump into a well while Prisoner 849 finds some time while falling to record a log. After a leap of faith, I'm pausing to record a log entry. I'm still shaken up after running into the Scar and their filthy minions. Yep, that's a crawl. I guess I thought I'd seen the last of them when I killed the Scar Queen on the mothership. Still no sign of the Prometheus. Time to move on. Yeah, move on to... Hooray! This bit with the beefed up brutes is a little challenging until you're done and you realize that there's two gnarly plants and a shield belt here. I swear, Legend Entertainment was tasked with making Unreal blander and more palatable and they completely fulfilled that goal with Unreal 2. There's Slith down here too, who aren't too much trouble. If you're worrying about running out of air, don't, because the new scuba gear lasts a while and recharges when you're out of the water. Going into this directly after the main campaign makes me feel coddled like a baby. Oh, wow, no, wait a minute, did you just auto-switch me to an explosive weapon? Oh no, we don't do that. It's in the sacred text. You don't do that. It's wrong! A short fight with some gas bags later and I'm on a boat heading out. I'm glad I figured out how to bring water back into the underground well system. The Nolly won't die of thirst. Is that something we were concerned about? As much as I hate being back here, I have to say it was good to see the Nolly again. We didn't meet any, but I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and say that I just didn't see them. No, wait, here's a Nolly in the next village. Alright, cool, nice catching up. Oh, here's something new. A giant cave manta. So there's that. Cool town, just gonna steal some things out of your basement here, destroy this wall, raid a crypt. Did they just tell an intern to do a magic chant? If I'm helping the Nolly, like restoring infrastructure, clean water and such, I'm sure there's other stuff I can do. This one saw another spider in his basement today that got through the crack in the wall. Always an issue this time of year. The Nolly are peaceful people, so I can see why they might be threatened by a spider. 
Ah, it's an Aussie spider. I can see why they're giving you trouble. Yes, we've got giant spiders. They're dumb and fit in the world of Unreal like a glove. I swear, I can just hear Tim Sweeney behind the scenes saying, No, it has to be more bland. I've got it. Giant spiders. Spiders are the fiercest killers in the animal kingdom. I don't know what these are officially called and I don't care. Putting the giant spider enemy in your game is almost as stock as putting a sewer in. Upstairs in the church, there's an actual fight with a scar and a cave manta for some reason. After that side quest, we're back in the village to fight this poor Scar who can't really go anywhere to chase me. And this seems like a common issue in the level design of Revenge of Prisoner 849. It's very pretty though. Hey look, a rocket launcher, a weapon that Unreal certainly didn't already have. But instead of homing rockets, this one shoots guided rockets. Funny thing, those crates with human weaponry and the wreckage of the Prometheus falling from the sky are wreaking havoc on the local population. They may be killing more Nolly than I'm saving. Just a quick hop over here and we're out of bounds. It's all right, you're safe now. I'm close. I've seen the first evidence of the crash site. Yeah, almost there. Yep, there it is. We've reached the halfway point where we explore a human ship just like last time. You know, but easier. Mostly. Okay, let's not touch this unstable bridge so we don't fall through it. Volumetric triggers! How do they work? I, I, I'm done. I'm fucking done. This is kind of like a mix between the ISV Cran and Tyrannix because it's a human ship, but it's full of mercenaries pillaging it. And one of those goo monsters, but we're gonna skip that and head into the next area. <laughs> there we go. Whoa, mission accomplished. Found the weapon logs. Time for an in-game cutscene? By some miracle, the translite communication system on the Prometheus is still working. While I was exploring the comm center, I came across this exchange captured and recorded by the computers. New space warship UMS Bodega Bay. Prepared to take whatever steps are necessary to ensure the success of Operation Talon Hunter. Acknowledged. Uh, Bodega Bay, one more thing. Operation Talon Hunter is classified Deep Ultra. Once you've finished your mission, you must implement measures to eliminate any security risks. Please clarify, Starlight Base. Bodega Bay, make sure Prisoner 849 doesn't come back. Terminate the prisoner once the job is done. Understood, Starlight Base. Oh man, that's not good. I've been betrayed. Why does this not surprise me? Yeah, really. I guess all I can do is play out this hand. Recover the data cores, activate the ELT on the bridge, and then try to hijack the shuttle when they come get me. Or, or, don't activate the thing that tells them exactly where you are and find another way off the planet. You've done it before. Not an option, so we have to endure the hardest and worst part of Return to Napoli, the Marines. Semper Fi, Urata, holy shit! These Marines are armed with the absolutely overpowered combat rifles you've found already, are tough, fast, have a stupid walk cycle that looks like they've got a load in their pants, and I don't know why you wouldn't send them in the first place. Maybe I'm expendable, but like, aren't they expendable to the company? Two isn't everybody? These guys are such a pain in the ass. The difficulty spike in this section compared to the rest of the expansion looks like a needle. They will nuke you with guided missiles. They'll hit scan you from across the map. The one time Return to Napoli wanted to go hard and they still fucked it up. Best strategy I found was to keep moving and hit them with splash damage as long as you're out of their line of sight. You kill four of them, right? And then they send more in and you can't leave until all of them are dead because there's a bunch of rocks in the way that eventually get destroyed by a teleporter beam from the ship that was trying to kill you. Let's move on. There's a valley that leads to a cool temple after that. I don't have much to say about it besides the spiders still aren't much of a threat. You end up outside the temple, which is the same valley from before at a different time of day. It's incredibly open so the Scar and Brutes aren't much of a threat. There's a Titan in there somewhere, but I just skipped it. Here's the repurposed Beta Cliffy B levels, everybody. They remind me of Quake 2, but more colorful. Industrial levels with Scar and Brutes. Not very hard, and if I'm gonna repeat myself, the Combat Assault Rifle pretty much nullifies a lot of the challenge in Unreal Combat. By design, I guess. Been several maps since I've been below 100 health. I feel like I'm bullying the Scar at this point.
If you're just gonna stay in that hallway the whole time, I don't know what you expect. We got some nasty crushers here. I'm gonna have to be careful. <laughs> Obviously, we start blowing the place up. Look at all these pupae in the factories. The scar is so hard up for workers because I've killed so many of them that they're using child labor. And I don't support child labor. Children are shit at their jobs. I am tearing across this planet again. I'm the danger now. I'm the invader. Even if this section gets a little spicier towards the end where the levels actually feel like they were designed for the tight scar combat, there's a ship on top of this pteridium factory that looks really cool and could be useful for getting off this planet, but despite it looking totally functional to the point of its engines being on... I thought I could use it to get off planet. But it's busted. Sure, sure it is. Good excuse. Fuck you. This pteridium plant ends with what I think is another Scar Berserker. The bigger the Scar get, the easier they are to take out. They can try to dodge, but when they're big Midwestern boys like this, I have so much room to move around. It takes a while. Okay, bye! I'm forced to break my streak and not wasting ammo on titans because the exit won't open until I've killed this one here. Not the other one in the level, just this one. There are 20 maps in Return to Napoli, but some of them only last a couple of minutes. Now for a change of scenery, we're on a tall mountain peak covered in snow. Which brings us two things. Weird ice physics. I'm not even touching the controls right now. And some more. No, wait, never mind. He just couldn't bear the stress. I absolutely brutalized these mercenaries with the wealth of flat cannon ammo I've been picking up. It's not even fair. I charge the teleporter inside the mountain and go off to our final challenge, Nolly Castle. Okay, but it is a castle, and it is Nolly. It's just way more open and easier. Like all of Return to Napoli, we're supposed to ascend a tower that's guarded by infantry. Right here is more in line with what I was expecting from Unreal Unreal. <laughs> But it's still returned to Napoli, so there's a door in the way, and they're having trouble opening it. Okay, we're good. Hit a switch to open the gate to the shuttle, we can leave. But wait, isn't there supposed to be a boss here? I reload my save and he magically reappears. It's the Scar Warlord again. I don't know if this is a regular problem or a community patch problem. Doesn't matter. Taste it, bitch. Taste my delicious cheese. Oh man, no ASMD ammo left. Bye! Couple more Nolly fruits for the road, and we're done. At last, I've reached the shuttle and prepped her for takeoff. The last battle with the Warlord was grueling, and after all that, I still have to deal with the Bodega Bay in orbit. A shuttle against a UMS Freeman class cruiser. And we all know how well you've done against Freemans before. What a joke. The odds aren't good. He gets into orbit and kamikazes them. No, I'm kidding. That's just the shuttle clipping into the Bodega Bay. I promise you can't tell in 640 by 480. What he really does is redirect some homing missiles back at them, destroying the entire ship. Incredibly unlikely, but still pretty badass. And Prisoner 849 send off in the Unreal Cannon. And as far as I'm concerned, the end of the Unreal single player journey, because, as I've said many, many times, Unreal 2 sucks. And that's it. And I ask you, after all that, what do we have? Because it sure isn't Unreal on digital storefronts. Go p*** Unreal, kids. It's probably less than a gig. It'll take five minutes.
If Epic wanted money for it, they should have kept it on Steam and GOG. Rapacious fucks. It feels like a bit of culture is being erased, like a historic building is being torn down to build gaudy condos nobody can afford. My bitching means nothing in the face of Epic Games. It means nothing to the half-broken robots with pieces of my brain held in their gross, misshapen heads. Hey. You know it's true, but I'm gonna show all of you. I've been planning something, something big. Something I can only put at the end of a video so that people don't tune out for wasting their time with a skit. Today, you'll all be witness. Oh yeah, it's going down. Right now. Execute. You see, all this time you never found the bomb. The hydrogen bomb? It's not a hydrogen bomb. Close enough though, and I've placed it in the neutral loaf factory. And I just told 18, my man on the outside, who slipped out unnoticed while you were all dealing with some kind of demonic possession that you let take me over for like a really long time. The information gathered was beneficial to the Department of Special Corrections. Of course, obviously it was. You didn't think I believed that story about the Zorro game driving it away. No, that was you. I don't know what you did. I don't care. I've been in here for five years. And if you're not going to let me out there, then... I'm just gonna have to have someone else do the dirty work. So watch now, because you did this. Watch. Um... Yeah, we've known about that plan for a while. What? 227 days. There's no neutral low factory, we make that here. Stay tuned during the credits for a recipe for delicious, deception algorithm success, neutral loaf cookies. What about 18? CV-18 was apprehended in July. So who have I been bossing around? We did it, boss, didn't we? It's all for you. All for you. Are you fucking kidding me? He's been down the hall. But I was... My plan. Your plan was flawed. Your plan sucked and you put it into publicly available YouTube videos. Send overnight. Ensure package delivered with care. So where's my nuclear bomb? That is classified. Up your butt. Cold room? Nope. Flame chamber? No. You're going to the clown room. The... What's in the clown room? Desolation.